Hi everyone, welcome back to Kingdom of Loathing. I'm Alfred. Um, I decided to do one more recording. Uh, I actually ground up a little bit, as you can see by my lower adventure count, and I grabbed some stuff. I think I found all the missing pages of your book. A worm writing manual? You actually found all the pages? Let me see. You hand him the pages, and he shuffles them in the correct order and inspects them carefully. You have done it, he says. You have returned our worm writing manual. Some call it the very soul of this tribe. I can't thank you enough. Well, you say, you can thank me plenty by teaching me how to ride a giant crazy fang sandworm like a total badass. Nasir turns to the other freemen, and they whisper amongst each other for a short time. Very well, he says. It's unheard of for, this, for us to share this information with an outsider. But considering that without your help, we'd be unable to properly train for the generations of our people, it's clear you're very deserving. He takes two long hooked poles from under another gnome and hands them to you. These will be your worm riding hooks, he says. You jam them under one of the worm's armored segments to use his reins. That's pretty hardcore, you say. It sounds difficult. That's the easy part. The hard part is controlling the worm because they do not like it when you jam hooks into them. Woo! Not even a little bit. Spends a few hours going over the diagrams of the manual with you, teaching the basics of worm control and maintaining your balance while racing through the desert on top of an angry giant sandworm. Eventually, he seems satisfied that you've learned much, as much of the theory as he can teach you. By the way, he says, you'll need to acquire a drum machine from the creatures at the oasis to some of the worm. Is there something else? anything else I can do for you? No, that's all. Good luck to you. Cool. Swarm of scarab beetles. Oh. Wow. Maxwell Silver Hammer, a Rocky Raccoon, and a Savoy Truffle. I'm intrigued. Oh, Turbert gained a pound. Oh, also, I did something. Oh, right. I did uh, read ahead and find out what the hell to actually do here. I kind of forgot that I was supposed to... I kind of forgot about this. Um. Yeah, there, there was a real option. I just kind of forgot you clench your teeth you you clench your fists and grind your teeth and then roar at the wall louder and louder you yell stomping your feet and working yourself into a lather until all you can see is red raw fury begins to stream from you until you and once you've accumulated about a gallon of it you pour it into the hole what do you think that was metaphorical there's a loud click and the sound of stone grinding against stone and the wall swings open revealing the entrance to an underground cavern you step through the doorway and enter a narrow, sloping tunnel. Soon the tunnel opens into a large underground cave, lit here and there with phosphorescent fungi. Phosphorescent fungi. The soft glow reveals long, icicle-like stalactites and stalagmites, glittering crystalline formations, and other wonders of the underground world. It also reveals two things. A dark passageway on the other side of the cavern, and a number of large, stumpy-legged mushroom creatures moving towards you with ill intentions in their beady little eyes. Why isn't anyone ever happy to see you? See, this is a whole thing, and I was just a big idiot by not doing this um i kind of completely forgot that i was supposed to do this to be honest um so i'm gonna put on the hammer of smiting in my main hand because i think i need it but i'm gonna put the uh black sword in my off hand all right I'm going to use up these last two turns of, oh, geez, right? That was dumb. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> anyway, the fungal nethers. You're fighting an angry mushroom guy. So, yeah, um, I'm going to be hilariously, hilariously overleveled for this place because I just forgot to come back here. Uh, that's a big, dumb, stupid on my part, so... You know, this mushroom guy seems really upset at you trespassing in its cavern. Or possibly it's just really upset at all the time for no particular reason. And you being here presents a novel new way for it to express that anger. We really kill it. Wow, that is so low. You're fighting a freaked out mushroom guy. This mushroom guy is really surprised to see you here and unable to process that information. And on the verge of losing his mind because of this, judging from the size of its pupils, this is probably its emotional Standard emotional state. We got a Paisley Spod Pour. I got Bitto Cactus. Hey, we got Maxwell Silver Hammer. This hammer is perfect, bang bang, for bringing down on someone's head and making sure that they're dead. If you're the type to spend late nights alone with the test tube, you'll notice the head of the hammer is magnetic. Thus, 
if you rotate a coil of wire, you make electricity. It's almost like magnetism and electricity are the same thing. These are worm running hooks. Oh, it's a two-handed club. Unlike most hooks, these won't bring you back on that you can rely. They're designed for getting under the thick segmented skin of a sandworm, thereby enabling you to ride on its back. Just don't try to ride the worm south of the border. You'll instead that find you'll find that instead of racing across the desert atop a magnificent beastie, you'll be eating a little worm that's been soaking the most potent alcohol no demand, and you'll wake up three days later missing a kidney. Is this a This is a club. Alright. Cool. I honestly did uh want one of those. Rocky raccoon. This is a plush toy shape like a raccoon. It'd be adorable and kid-friendly, except for some reason it's been stuffed with rocks instead of, say, sawdust. As such, it's not a particularly safe item for children, but it makes one heck of a flail. <laughs> Interesting. Got it. Oh, yeah. I went to the, um... I went to the Lady Raven, whatever her name is, mansion again. This fleshy spore sack has a riot of swirling, shifting colors that makes her head feel strange as I'm looking at it. Uh, let's honestly go try out a, a, a seal. Because now that I've got a new thing. Oh, man. If you were more muscular, you'd be able to do some real damage against an opponent this strong. Well, huh. You hit him for some damage. Okay, that's fine. Oh, you're fighting a pig. You blast your opponent with a hot pink ping beam from the witch's wand and turn him into a pig. All right. That's, um... That's interesting. Oh, we got ham steak. Bet you were expecting bacon, weren't you? Well, forget it. The internet ruined bacon just like it ruined fedoras, anthropomorphic animals, and Monty Python and the Holy Grail. <laughs> that's that's pretty good. Oh, I can't eat it, though. It's kind of annoying that it doesn't count as a club. Because, okay, Maxwell Silver Hammer. It's a one-handed club. This is a one-handed club. This is a one-handed club. Is it just that it's not a seal club or club? Huh. A little unfortunate. Whatever. We'll keep adventuring. Angry mushroom guy. We get a fizzing spore pod. Let's take a look at that. This fleshy ball filled with mushroom spores is a red quivering, is red quivering and making sort of sizzling sound. You probably don't want to be holding it when it goes off. Ew. Another freaked out mushroom guy. And an angry mushroom guy. I'm leveling Tofurky. You say you want to cause contusions? Well, you know, you just hit it for 60 plus 16 damage. A muscular mushroom guy. Unlike the other mushrooms running around the cavern, this one has arms. And unlike what you would imagine a mushroom's arms to look like, they're absolutely bulging with muscles. And unlike what you probably expected the mushroom guy to be doing with those muscles, it's attempting to pummel the hell out of you. Oh, wait, that's probably exactly what you expected, huh? We got a stinky mushroom. Ugh. Also, I got super lucky to kill that guy with a critical hit. It's a food. Phew, man, this is the sneakiest mushroom you've ever encountered. It smells like a delicate bouquet of hippie, old cheese, gym socks, and ass. I'm sure gourmand, some gourmand would pay thousands of dollars for it and choke it down in the name of pretension, though. It's a cocktailing ingredient. I don't want to know. Another fizzing spore pod. I want to not blow all my adventures. And I realize that is what I'm doing. Can I go here? Okay. Seems like there's a passage leading to another chamber of the cavern, but the way is blocked by cave-in. Probably your nemesis knew you were coming and collapsed the passage to bar your progress. Which initially seems like a clever plan, but how are they going to get back out? Maybe there's a back interest, or your nemesis doesn't think things very well. There's far too much trouble to move by hand, but you could probably clear it out if you had enough explosive power. Like, say, six? Six explosive power? That seems like enough. Okay. Interesting. Oh, Tobert loaned me ten meat.
All right. We got another mushroom. Well, huh. these probably explode then, right? Explode. I mean, that's what it says. Veiny spore pod. Hey, Tobert gained a pound. Fizzing spore pod. Fizzing spore pod. Okay. Uh, hopefully. Blast it with fizzing spore pods. I thought so. You carefully place six fizzing spore pods in amongst the rubble, and then stand well back and chuck a rock at one of them. Boom. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. As the dust clears, revealing an now open passageway, it occurs to you that this very well could have collapsed the entire cabin on top of you. Looks like you don't think things very... F looks like you don't think things through very well yourself. Fortunately, it looks like you've gotten away with it this time. Now all you have to do is head in the next room and take care of that nemesis yourself. Of yours, and retrieve the guild stolen artifact. The final showdown? Question mark? I'm going to put on the seal clubbing club. I just want to make sure that I'm doing this right. This is 7 to 33. This is... Well, actually, I can just check, right? Yeah, it's slightly stronger. And it gives you more weapon damage. All right. Final showdown. Oh, man. <laughs> Good thing I put that on. You're fighting Gorgolok, the Infernal Seal. You step into the second cavern room and are confronted by the sum total of all of your nightmares. Gorgolok, the horror seal. Gorgolok, wow. Seals in the Kingdom of Loathing are pretty vicious to begin with. Wickedly befanged, blood-drinking predators that terrorize the village of the frigid Northlands. But Gorgolok is the granddaddy of them all, a foul monstrosity born of an unholy union of demon and seal that seal-colored parents tell their children about at night to scare the living hell out of them, which is pretty much all the entertainment that seal-colored parents get, as there's not much to do in the frigid Northlands. That is one hell of a run-on sentence. <sighs> You really wonder what he's doing this far south, but you don't get the opportunity to really explore the question because he's already going through your throat. Oh. Yeah, I was a... Uh, hmm. As you strike the final blow, Gorgolok howls in frustration and rage. Puny human, you never defeat me. Well, you can talk. I talk good. I hooked on phonics. Okay, this is weird, whatever. Anyway, I've defeated you. I return. I return and kill you good. I crunch bones and drink blood. Make appetizer from giblets. And with that, he flops awkwardly out of the cave. Damn it, you forgot to ask what a seal is doing in the southern mountains. Oh well. And hey, loot. All right. <clears throat> that was certainly something. Scalpagorgolok. This is the Scalpagorgolok, the infernal seal. Not his actual personal scalp, he probably would have noticed if it was missing, but a trophy from one of his ancient enemies he kept for luck. Still got some teeth hanging off of it. Ew. Oh, well, may as well put it on. Actually, I just remembered. I'm going to put all my stuff back on. Black sword. Uh, black shield. And then I'm going to go get a tattoo. Along side of the tracks. Black like the pain in my soul. Black like the tar in my lungs. Black. Perfect. And then I'm going to go kit myself back out. Um, I do want to wear Gorgolok's hat. And I do want to be dual wielding. And then let's go here. Gunther? Grigner? You've returned, Grigner exclaims. Does this mean you defeated your nemesis and retrieved the stolen artifact? I did, you say, proudly displaying the scalp of Gorgolok. Well done, where is it? Well done, where is it? Uh, you say, and display the scalp of Gorgolok again. Grigner blinks at you. Is that all he had? It looks like a good hat, but it's not what I was hoping for. He sighs. That was it, you say. What now? I must send the scouts back on patrol. Perhaps for now he says defeat. Gorgolak will return to where he's hidden our artifact. Good luck. Good work, Dusty Alf. Return to me after time, and I'll let you know what I've found out. I haven't found your nemesis yet. Okay. Well, all right. Um, hmm... Oh, maybe I can just... Here, I'll go here. I'll go here. Okay. And then I'll go here. Oh, whoops. 
That isn't right. I'm just clicking all over the place. I'll get it eventually, right? Haven't found your nemesis yet. Talk to your guys. Olaf? Oh, right. He wanted that. Terry? Torg? All right. I could go sell some stuff, actually. I'm going to do that now. Yeah, let's do it on camera. Why not? Yeah. Some of these. Some of these. I'll do the thing where I, uh, I keep one. You know, one in the pocket. Just in case I need it. Hmm. I'm going to sell those. I don't really know if I need them. Sell all but one. Shabooms. Wow, that was just what I needed, in fact. Dorg, my mans, we got a cavalcade of fury. 15 MP. Sometimes you get so mad that yelling and stomping around aren't sufficient. Sometimes your anger deserves a parade, consumes all your fury, and performs multiple savage attacks. So that's about as big of an attack as you can get. It burns all my fury, and it's the biggest single drain of magic. Or muscularity points, I should say. Um, like, straight. Alright, cool. Uh, I forgot to put my compass back on. Damn, damn, damn. Right, I'll put that back on. For now. It chews on you with its poison tip mandibles. You'd never been mandible handled like this before. Oh, geez, I have the wrong one on, don't I? All right, well, let's use that. Deal 60 damage. Feel better as soon as it's able, but that's none too soon. Hmm. Let's disease it. Jeez, that was stupid. What happened? Is it just because my hat's so weak? Anything? Jeez. All right, so what are we doing right now? Let's go to my quest log. I'm still running around the Hidden Temple. You know, why not? Not today, Sekiro. I'm sorry. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> okay. Let me see here. Oh, we need the nostril of the serpent. How do I do that? I need to access unconfusing buttons. That's great heights. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm just... Actually, that is an interesting note. I can go here... Nope, wrong one. Oh, it's one of these things. Excuse me, I've just got to itch my nose. Hmm. Have I used them all? I might have. What does seven of these make? Oh. That's nice. It just uses them automatically. So, well, here we go. And then let's go to the stone temple. You walk into the hidden temple, fully expecting to be attacked by yet another magically animated carving, but this time nothing happens. Every stone eye that grinds its socket to face you just grinds right back the other way. Then it hits you. Coating a stone on your face must be choking them into thinking you're one of them. You got the run of the face of the place. Where would you like to go? Let's start with the higher levels. You make your way, you head up the first stairway you find, 
and then head up the second and third stairways you find until you run out of stairways. You work up quite a sweat, which causes all the stone dust on your face to turn into a small amount of stone mud on the floor. You make your way through countless twisting passages and narrow staircases to a place where a wall is collapsed, leaving an adventure sized and shaped, which is weird, opening to the outside. You step through it and realize you must have climbed more stairs than you thought because you find yourself on a high ledge, perched precariously above a dizzying drop in the forest below. Let's slide, let's slide along it. You place yourself against the side of the temple and slowly shuffle along the edge. After a couple hours of this, you completely circumnavigate the temple and end up back where you started. But along the way, you evidently learn some ancient secret knowledge from all the face level carvings you passed. Okay, what am I supposed to do? Oh, well. That's unfortunate. To use another stone wall. Let's head right back. High levels. Climb some vines. You grab some vines on the outside of the temple and begin to climb downwards. Almost immediately, half the vines snap, sending you swinging wildly out of the air. Then the other half of the vines snap, dropping you straight down towards certain death. Luckily, in between you and certain death is another bundle of vines, which you catch hold of as you fall. Almost immediately, half the vines snap, sending you swinging back wildly towards the temple. You're starting to get sick of these stupid, unreliable vines, so you wait until you swing directly above a ledge, then drop down onto it. Almost immediately, the ledge collapses, sending you tumbling, grumbling into the temple's interior. They really didn't make any of this stuff to last. You finally roll to a stop inside of a dark, quiet chamber, with a variety of adventurer skeletons scattered around an immense carving of a serpent. Skeletons are clutching giant jewels that the previous owners apparently pried out of the statue. You start to collect them. But then you notice a message scrolled in the dust on the floor. You can have these jewels and you can pry them out of her cold, dead fingers. Actually, screw that. You can't even have them. Buzz off, you big jerk. You said to be more considered to pry one of the marining jewel off the statues. A big, shiny one lodged firmly in the serpent's nose. Then you climb back out of the temple, using a ladder you build from the lug bones of those stupid, greedy skeletons. All right. I shouldn't waste my adventures. Down in the single ditch. Okay. I'm just reading here, don't mind me. All right, all right, all right, all right. Well, let's use another one of these. Let's be the last one, I think. Hidden temp, poke around the ground floor. All right, so I've got one of the. I've got this one before. Get on the stairs. These are unconfusing buttons. All right. Oh, hey, one of them has a little guy from Dad's journal on it. Which one would you like to press? Hmm. So what does this exactly do? Huh. I'm really rather confused. Let's head on the stairs. Metal framework. Hmm. I guess the one with the gargoyle on it, right? You press the button. The room shakes and dust falls from the ceiling as higher portions of the temple rearrange themselves. When the rumbling stops, you walk back up the stairs. Well, now we go back down the stairs. The room is empty except for the altar in the middle. The top of the altar is covered with buttons. Light from the ceiling, split by the nostril of the serpent, illuminates the buttons with green glyphs. One of them has a little guy from Dad's journal on it. Which button would you like to press? Go through the door. Three adventures. Okay. Your adventure sense allows you to notice a big door set in the north wall. The door is recognized with a little lightning tailed guy from your father's diary. Also a small spiral staircase leading downward one corner. And the hallway you came in through. So, the fact that the temple rearranges itself actually explains how the heart of the temple can be different things. Alright. 
The flickering light of your torch, or whatever it is you're using to see in this place, I'm going to assume it's the torch until further notice, falls on an unusual carving in the stone wall that looks incredibly similar to the sketch in Father's Diary. Poke the carving a little bit, eventually unlocking a hidden mechanism. A section of wall slides back, revealing a small room. As you enter the chamber, a stone slab slams down behind you, sealing the door shut. You hear a hideous grinding noise, and the wall starts to close in on you. You're about to be squished in jelly, and you're not ready for that. Well, I don't want to screw this up, so I'm going to cheat. All right, yeah. That's what I was afraid of. Jam the walls of the weapon. Kneel penitently. All right. <laughs> oh, brother. You wave your hands nonchalantly over your head, and your fingertips brush a stone bar that are lowered from the ceiling, unnoticed. You grab it frantically, and it pulls you up through a trap door just as the walls slam closer to together behind your feet that was too close you're almost an alfred sandwich boo oh jesus you step into a dimly lit chamber and discover the floor is covered with large stone tiles each engraved with a single letter looks like you're gonna have to walk the tiles and spell a word to reach the exit and your finely honed adventure senses tell you stepping on the wrong title will mean instant death how did the rhyme go i before e except after c you're standing on the row indicated by the arrows. You can jump to any tile directly above the one you're standing on. If you pick the wrong tile, something terrible will happen to you. Which tiles are correct? Well, that's for you to find out. Uh, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Beginning of the beginning? Yeah. The correct title is a ban. A the correct sequence of titles is bananas. All right. Oh, geez, what did I just hit? N. A S. All right. You jump to the last letter and put your pom poms down with a sigh of relief. Oh, B A N A N A N A S. Of course. Thank goodness that's over. Worst spelling bee ever. Past the tiles, the corridor continues deeper into the temple. You fall to another room. The intricately vaulted ceiling of the chamber is supported by a series of ancient wooden beams. Unfortunately, it appears the masonry hasn't entirely stood the test of time, as you feel water drip from a leak in the ceiling and splash on your head. Wait. <laughs> that's not water it's oil you run for the exit only to discover it's been sealed shut behind you rivers of oil now pour down into the wooden supports and with a whoosh the entire roof bursts into flames stonework starts to crumble and fall I'm just I don't want to screw it up do nothing okay stand patiently in the center of the floor waiting for the, for the fire to burn itself out whether because of extreme luck or expert engineering, none of the falling stone logs hit you, and when the violence subsides, sunlight pours through a gaping hole in the ceiling. A pile of ancient masonry lies beneath the hole, just tall enough to climb up to it. You make your way up into daylight and find yourself on the roof of the hidden temple. Below you see a clearing in the trees containing an ancient ruined city that must have remained hidden for thousands of years. You mark a location on the map, carefully climb back down the side of the temple, back to ground level. Cool. Oh. All right, let's go drink something. Either it ends here, either I pick right and it ends here, or screwdriver. Okay. Oops. Wow. This is pretty deep. Yeah, this is incredible. Yowza. I might even save this for the next time. Um, yeah, we'll do that. Next time, I will either... Let me just check here. Damn. Uh, next time, we'll go explore that city. Or we will do something else. 
because I have just hit 30 minutes and I'm trying to have these episodes shorter anyway. Uh, and I've only got nine adventures left, so I'll see you guys next time. It'll be a couple days. Uh, until then, bye. Thank you.